Pruning is the process of cutting down branches or leaves from a tree for different reasons. You can cut branches from a tree because the branch is becoming an obstruction to the road. You can cut down branches from a tree because you are trying to prevent it. Like sometimes you see that the branch is almost coming into your window and you don't want snakes to, to other animals to have access to your house through the branch of the tree. You can cut down branches from a tree um, because you are trying to make way for construction. You don't want them to be in the way of electric wires or other things that are going to run through there. There are many reasons why you could cut down branches or parts of the tree. But when it comes to pruning, this month we are talking about fruitfulness. Last week we talked about choosing to bear fruit. We discovered in John chapter 15 that Jesus told us, I have chosen you to bear fruit. So it is not our choice. It is a command. And there are so many commandments in the Bible that nobody can say this is the number of commandments in the Bible because there are so many of them. And one of them is when Jesus says, I have chosen you to be a fruit. You did not choose me. I chose you to be a fruit. Fruit that will remain. Fruit that will last. Today we are continuing in this series of fruitfulness and the topic we are talking about in the next few minutes is pruned to bear good fruit. Pruned to bear good fruit. Cutting branches, cutting our leaves, trying to Prune a tree is a very uncomfortable process. In fact, some trees do cry when you cut them out. And if you doubt me, go to some trees. You will see, actually see that the tree is bleeding, bleeding fruit from it. Because it's very uncomfortable. We saw that in the lot of sun, uh, first day lesson where it says that no matter the type of pruning, it involves a sharp knife. When you're talking about pruning, it's a very uncomfortable process for the tree. Because the tree is there. On its own, did it ask for your help? It's not the tree's problem if it's blocking your way. It's not the tree's problem if you want it to bear more fruit. Just leave me the way I am. But no, as the owner of the tree that bears fruit, you want to prune the tree to bear more fruit. And in order for this tree to bear this fruit, the tree has to be pruned. And so pruning has three stages. The first stage is the stage that is called cleanup. The first aspect of pruning is called cleanup. In the first stage of cleanup, the pruner, the farmer, goes to the tree and starts removing dead bark. You know what we call bark? The bark of the tree? You remove the barks of the tree. You look at the tree. You see the leaves that are dead. You cut them down. You see some branches that are dead. You cut them down. You start cutting it out. Anything that is dead on that tree, you start cutting it out. That is the first stage of pruning. And it's called cleanup. In the process of cleanup, the, the, the tree may not really understand what is happening. The tree may feel good because all those dead things are going out of it. And so the tree looks more beautiful and is wondering if this is what pruning is, then I think I like it. And that is the same thing that happens to us human beings, when somebody tells us, for you to get there, you need to pass through some processes, and in your life, you said, ah, oh, whatever it is, I can do it. Hey, and then, then you, you go through the beginning 
of the prophets, and uh, you say, ah, is this what you're talking about? Ah, I'm ready. Let's go. But you're still in the first stage of pruning, and that first stage is called clean up. You remove the dead things, the dead backs of the tree, the dead leaves, the dead branches, and the tree feels alive. I feel good. That is just the beginning. But then, we go to the next process of pruning, which is called thin out. And that happens after a while, the farmer comes back to the same tree, to the second process, and it's called thin out. Thin out means that the farmer now comes to the tree and starts cutting out some branches from the tree and some leaves from the tree that are not dead. Remember the first stage was clean up. It was to cut out dead leaves and dead branches and dead backs of the tree. But now the second one is thin out. You come and you still see that some parts of the tree are living but the farmer is cutting them out. Why? Because the process of pruning involves that there has to be enough space in between branches to give room for the fruits when it starts coming. And in as much as the branches in the second stage now are living, but they are not needed, they need to go. Now the farmer starts cutting out these living branches, and this tree starts feeling very uncomfortable because, I mean, the, the first stage was clean up. I understand that you came and you cut down all the dead parts of my tree. I understand that you came and you cut out the backs of the tree. But why are you cutting these branches that are alive? Why are you cutting them? And the answer is because we have to cut down these ones to make room for the fruits when it starts coming. You know, we wanted to travel abroad. You know, when you want to travel abroad, you may not really have a particular country in mind. You have the mind you either go to Queen Elizabeth or you come to Bush. That time. <laughs> and so, we knew that the easier way for us to come out was school. And so, my husband started applying to schools. And we got several admissions in the UK. I'm talking about going. When God is leading you, it's usually a pruning process. We got several admissions in the UK. And my husband was presently at that time in Norway. And his plan was that he would go from Norway to the school he got the admission in Newburgh. It was already a seemingly perfect plan. But the only thing that was keeping him was that the transcript and the certificate needed to be signed. But Alala Day was on vacation. So, it was, that was the only thing. The school said, if you present the signed certificate, then you can start. He already had a date and he had to move. But he had to come with that certificate. Or the certificate had to be mailed originally. Things have changed a little bit now to the school. But Alali was on vacation. We were so furious because we, 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 were, we were wondering why he couldn't deputize somebody. He said, was it not so, is it not the registrar that's supposed to sign? What is that? What has the president got to do? And then they sent him a message wherever he was and told him that some people desperately need this certificate signed. Is there any way you can delegate someone to sign this certificate so that these people will meet the deadline? And they will not have to come back to Nigeria. They will just go straight from Norway. And that said, everything will happen when I come back. <laughs> And he drops those 
But my husband entered the plane and was coming back to Nigeria. He was cursing and lullaby. Because he said, this man, I will never forget what he did to me. But we didn't know that God was taking us through a process. <laughs> Immediately, my husband arrived like the next week. And I then came back. And I was like, so you should, you could have. <laughs> and so that opportunity was missed. That, you know, you didn't do quarterly system. That we have already missed that quarter. And so that one was gone. So that chapter was closed. But then, oh, I don't understand the, what is it that when God is taking you to your destination, he doesn't make the past move. Does he have to be through the process of pruning? That is what we are talking about today. Jesus says, you will be pruned to bear more fruit. It's not that you cannot bear fruit when you're not pruned. The issue is bearing more fruit. So it's okay with bearing one or two fruit, fine. But Jesus is saying, I want you to bear fruit. And I want you to bear more fruit. And in order for you to bear more fruit, my father will prune you. So, that time, Makinde was here on sabbatical, and he arranged with the president of La Sierra to come for a one-week spiritual emphasis in Bangkok, President Gerati. La Sierra was nowhere in our mind. It was nowhere in our mind. When we are talking about coming to school, you don't know who here who knows La Sierra. It was us that opened La Sierra to people. They said, well, which one is La Sierra? Nobody knows La Sierra. So, Chimaki, they came here, did his sabbatical and came, and then Professor Gerati came for the one week ritual, week of ecstasy. And there, as he finished, we downloaded the application from La, for La Sierra. We were just trying our luck. We filled out everything. Everything that was required, my husband gave it to us. And you know, he just came back from Norway. He counted the $4,000. Everything that was needed, he gave it to the president of the school. Remember, the president of this other school was on vacation. This one, he gave it to President Gerard and said, I want to come to Nasir. This man took, he, like, he took his admission <laughs> and came here, gave it to the right purposes. Before we knew it, the rest is history. It was when we came to the US, just a few months later, my husband came to the kitchen and told me, I'm having this pain in my stomach. That will not go away. Could it be appendix? I said, I don't know. The day before, he had eaten guava. So on our mind went that. It's appendix. You know what happens when you eat guava sometimes? And then he went in. My husband, he couldn't walk. This thing was like, within three hours, he was dying. We was like, ah, what kind of sickness is this? Like, he was going down the drain. He quickly rushed to Parkview. He came to Parkview. They said that it's obstruction. I said, no, it's not obstruction. He went to the toilet this morning. You know, they are gambling. They brought me and said, no, this is not. They said, ah. So what is this? After handling him for like two or three days, they moved him to, to Los, uh, Loma Linda. And that was that. Within like two weeks, my husband was like letter I. And then from there, from there, they finally discovered that he had pancreatic stones. And that these stones have been there for almost 30 years. My husband had told me when we were cutting that sometimes his stomach turns. You see, when you're cutting and somebody tells you something, don't brush it off, keep it in your mind. He told me when I was very, very small, somebody wanted to kill me in my village and give me something to drink. After, immediately I drank that poison, my stomach started, and that, he said, he later got um, got well, but the stomach just from time to time he stopped him. 
So when they said that that thing had been there for almost 30 years, we related it back to the time he drank that thing in the beer. And he said, they, they, he said, sir, do you drink? This only happens to people that drink. He said, I don't even drink soda. Don't drink soda. And before you know it, a lot of things were happening. It was like some sicknesses when they decide to come, they come. And it, it's mean that the sickness has been there, but it just came. But it was later that we understood that God had prevented this admission to the UK and everything to bring us here for him to leave. Because when he got to the situation, the leader of all places didn't know what to do. They kept him as a research for medical students. And if I read them, but what come there with your lab coat, sir? So what is this? So how can you check for them? Are you serious now? <laughs> And one of his cousins said, I know someone that works in Loma Linda. He's the head of the transplant unit. And he now called that man, Dr. Joy. And it happens that Dr. Joy is close to my village. And then, Linda is so big, you don't know who he works for unless you know. And Dr. Joy now took up his case. Because every other person did not know what to do. He said, brought us into his office and he was almost crying. He said, I just came to America. I will do what I will do. I'm not guaranteeing that you will leave. But I'm going to do what I will do so that at least I know I did something. Because it pays me to watch you die without doing anything. And he had a board like this in his office. He used the marker and started drawing for us what he was going to do inside my husband's abdomen. He told her, I'm going to do this, I'm going to cut this, I'm going to join this here, I'm going to do this. He finished that. He said, uh, he told us, is that okay? He said, okay, if it's okay, we'll schedule the surgery, you know, the pretest, everything and everything. Then on the day of the surgery, I was sitting on the floor. I was sitting on the floor at our house. And I was asking God. I don't know everything I told God that time, but I told him my mind. After we call, I said, is he alive? He said, yes. It was supposed to be like an hour, hour, two hours surgery. But he spent 12 hours. 12 hours. And then, after the surgery, the doctor said, when I got there, what I saw is not what I expected. I had to start doing a lot of things that I didn't plan. And I still wanted to make sure you still had a good life. Surgery that should have taken like two, three hours took 12 hours. But before that surgery, when Dr. Joa had decided to do that surgery, a lot of doctors were coming to my husband on his bed and telling him not to let him do the surgery. Because he had, just before that surgery, he had gotten a promotion because he operated on a dying soldier and the soldier leaked. And so the U.S. government gave him an award. You know, Nigeria says it's different. There are some things we do. My father calls it number six. So when he got that award, his counterparts were jealous. So he, they came to my husband on his bed. Father is dying. So he said, don't let him. Or oh, Joe always wants to prove and do things that he always feels he knows it all. He's talking to somebody that is. Don't let him do that surgery on you. That is not his specialty. I don't know what he's planning to do, but there's no, no really a cure for this. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Finish and go. And then come and say, but you who know that I can walk from my house to this man's house in the village. You're talking about my brother. You know who you're talking about. You're talking about my 
and run. <laughs> and then the surgery was successful. And he went through the recovery process. And a few months later, that was his story. It was later that we realized, and you know, after that surgery, we didn't like six months. The heat was too much because they were ready. And he left for John Hopkins. I'm talking about the timing when God wants to save your life. He times it. He times it. And if you walk with him, the pruning process may be difficult. We didn't travel when we wanted to travel. So we are thinking, ah, ah. we thought we'd have mixed this cup and we thought, you know, everything was you know, not happening according to our time. And then we said, okay, somehow, when we started, um, when we started uh, um, processing uh, last year, at a particular time, I wanted to go in a particular quarter when I discovered I was pregnant with Jessica. But then, I don't know if you can remember, there was a time in Nigeria that the U.S. Embassy was on fire. It was the time that we were supposed to go for interview. <laughs> so everything was delayed. Because my... my <laughs> <laughs> I knew in my mind that I was going to deliver Jessica in America. But because of the embassy that went on fire, Jessica doesn't know whether the US embassy is on fire. The baby was growing. <laughs> and then <laughs> they now told me, oh, what is your delay? He did it. He told me September 20th. I said, okay, somehow. We'll still land America. Jessica came out in August. <laughs> I had to leave Jessica with my mother. Because when you got that visa, because she was not in the I 20. <laughs> she was not in the I 20. 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 She was not in the I I had to leave Jessica with my mother and I traveled with my husband to meet the deadline, the entry deadline. And I thank God that I had a mother to leave her with. It was when I came here and started preparing for my NCLEX that I knew why Jessica, God brought Jessica out in August because I needed to study. Because what I went through when I was doing my PhD with China Chidiama is not what you want to go to when you're doing NCLEX. You are typing your assignment, the baby is typing his phone. You just load the computer. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, feels aside is over, it's over. <laughs> it's over. So I left Jessica and when I came, I concentrated and I studied and by the grace of God. And before we knew it, we got our green card to the envy of the person at the student services, international student services. He said, do you know how many times I've applied to these people to change my status? And they wouldn't. And they just gave it to you? No, he didn't know when he, he was frustrated. Because he himself is the one that is guiding international students on what to do. If it was not there that we knew he didn't have paper. <laughs> we were like, oh, so this man doesn't even have paper, he's just walking. So he said, this is the first in history that we will have a student become a resident before they graduate, within two years. Because God took us through the pruning process. They are living in our lives. And that second stage is called thin out. And then you're like, ah, God, why are you doing this one? This one is small because it's creating more space for fruit. And you think that it is done. Then you go to the next stage of the pruning process that is called head out. You come and you look at the three, they have cut. Leave, they have cut out like almost the leaves. They remove almost all the leaves. You say, ah, why? It's called head out. You remove the leaves, so many branches, so many leaves. That process is called head out. And that is the final stage 
pruning process. During the head out stage, the tree looks bald. That's why it's called head out. You cut out a lot of things, no leaves, nothing. You look at it, it looks ugly. There is, when you get to this third stage of the pruning process, you may not look beautiful. Even to yourself, you ask yourself, why am I in this uncomfortable situation? The answer is, you are in the pruning process. And then after they head out, what happens? Then gradually the leaves start coming. And then the tree comes back to life. And then the fruits come. And then you see abundance of fruits coming from the same tree that was in the head out process a few months ago. And you wonder, wow, how beautiful. How beautiful the production, how beautiful the yielding. Only because the tree had gone through the three stages of pruning. Clean up, which means cutting out dead things. The second stage is thin out. Cutting out even some living things that are not needed. And then the third stage, which is removing everything that will be an obstruction to fruitfulness. When God has called us to bear fruit, he wants us to bear more fruits. Fruits that will remain. Being a Christian is a process. You cannot be a Christian and be in one place. If what you're doing now is what you have been doing, there's no progress, then you're not growing. A Christian must be growing. That is why God wants us to continue to bear fruit, to continue to bear good fruit, to continue to impact our lives, your workmates, your business partners, whoever it is, they need to know you as a Christian. They need to know you. When they hear you, it needs to bring in. You can't please everybody, that's of course. But people that know you will know that this person is a child of God. If they don't know you like that, then you are not bearing the good fruit that Jesus has called us to do. Pruning process is a difficult process. Pruning process is not a process that is comfortable. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for the night. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. The darkest hour becomes a job inside. I can Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning, weeping only lasts for the night. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. The darkest.
Let us stand. Ask God. God, is there something you are taking me through? Please, let me see the lesson you want me to learn from this pruning process. Is there something that you're taking me through that you want me to bear more fruit? Is there something that is happening to me that looks so uncomfortable that I see as a temptation, but I don't know that you're actually taking through me, taking me through a process. Open my eyes to see and walk with you that your purpose of me bearing good fruit and not just do for more fruit will be accomplished. Hold on, my child. That is different. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. We